Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. You don't have to raise your hand. But how many have heard of the book of Jude before? It's kind of hidden. There's only like, there's two pages. Like if you look in the Lutheran Study Bible, there's two pages and the first side is a description. So really totally it's like two and a half sides for the whole book. Not very long. You ever go in a room and you forget? Why am I in this room? I, I, don't, have, I don't think you got to get to a certain age for that to happen. Because that's been happening to me for a while. I walk in somewhere in a room where I'm going to get something and it's gone. <laughs> you know, sometimes you'll, re, you'll trace your steps. Um, sometimes it's because some, something else is on your mind. You're thinking of something else. How many of you lose your car keys? I put my car keys in the same spot all the time. Because if I don't, I'm never going to find them. It's easy to forget the letter of Jude. (laughs) It's kind of hidden. You could page through and it's so small, you're going to whip right by it. It's just before Revelation. 25 verses, one chapter, but Jude has a very important message for us, especially on this last day of the church year, when we look ahead to Jesus' return. It's about not forgetting. It's about remembering And Jude teaches us that. Remember, it's easy to forget. It's very, very easy to forget. It happened before. The church forgot about Jesus. The disciples, most of them had died. This epistle was written in A.D. 68. 35 years after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. So he writes, Jude writes this with the purpose to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus who saved a people out of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. The church had forgotten Jesus. They had forgotten his promised return. I'm talking in the scriptures. I'm talking in the book of Jude. They had forgotten. Having forgotten the reality of who Jesus is, some Christians, they perverted the grace into believing more in the incense than in God's grace. They denied. They turned forgiveness of sins into incense and denied Jesus. And then we forget that Jesus is both Savior destroyer see that doesn't go very well that doesn't hit headlines you don't get people in church (laughs) saying Jesus is savior and destroyer that scares people but that's the truth 
What happens to those who are not saved? What happens to those that do not believe when Jesus comes back? Well, they were a good person, so no, no, no. Our God is real. This isn't about the fluffy bunnies and... (laughs) This is real. This is important. And unfortunately, our society, some will be saved, some will not. So then we think, well, if I take and I do certain things, I can change what's going on. If only we can get to the good old days. For me, it's the 70s. <laughs> if only we can get back to those good, idea, good old days, everything was fine. Everything was okay. Really? Was it really okay? Was everything really, really good? Remember gas prices going through the roof? Remember inflation going through the roof? I remember hearing about interest rates, double-digit interest rates on a house. (laughs) Were they really that good? But only if we could go back to those good old days. And the question I would ask you, is Christ reigning now or not? You can answer that. Yes, he's reigning now. When he said it was complete, it's complete, it's done. But guess what? This world, this world stinks. This world's messed up. In this world, we remain messed up until he comes again and puts his enemies under his feet. But we need to remember he is working in this world. He is working. Now, you like me, I get impatient. And I'm not telling you to just lay back and not do anything. Because then... We fall in the sin for not doing what God would have us do. Because he does have us work in this world towards the better. But if we think, <laughs> if we think this world's going to be all fixed before he comes back, I've got bad news for you. It's not. But in this place, you Christians, shine your light and then go out into the world and shine your light that others will see that, yes, you are different. You are not the same as the world. You are different. Because one day, Christ will return. We, but we got to remember, he is reigning now. He is working now. Even the stupid things our government does, even the things our state does and other states do that we don't like, so i got to remind myself of this. That he is working that he is working, and I need to trust him. We need to trust him that he's working through that. So when I get back into this text, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. 
pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep coming to church, hearing his word, receiving his body and blood to strengthen you. Prayer will strengthen your faith when God answers your prayer. Keep yourself in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Where's Doug at? (laughs) Okay, hang on, guys. You are not worthy to come before God. And without Jesus, we would be destroyed coming before God. But on account of Christ, he he does not see our sin. His blood covers us. Believe that. Believe that. Believe that for your brother. Believe that for the person, your neighbor, whoever it is that, oh, he's driving me nuts. The person that is out there that irritates us. If you look in the text a little bit more, have mercy on those who doubt. What about those that wonder? Does God exist? Did Christ die for me? Isn't that a doubter? We're to have mercy on them as Christ has mercy on us when our faith gets rocked. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. I was a little nervous when I say little Christ because we don't measure up. but be little Christ going out in the world because God will use you to save others. So in that way, I would say use his example of the mercy that he has shown. He went to people who were, let's just say it right out, prostitutes, Tax collectors, oh my word, do you know how bad a tax collector was? We're not talking today, they wear a suit and they're all, you know, this is all good. This is like a bookie, not quite a bookie, but kind of the same level in those days, a tax collector. Because if I got from Elsie, if I was a tax collector and I went to Elsie and collected the tax, Guess what? I would give the government X amount and I'd keep the rest. So I was trying to get as much as I could. (laughs) So those are bad people. Not good people. And who did Jesus associate with? Those type of people. (laughs) Save others by snatching them from the fire. Show mercy with fear. Show mercy with fear. What is that about? What's that fear? Hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Show mercy, but don't fall into the trap of sin. Don't let anybody drag you down. But show mercy. And here's a great thing. Now to whom is it who is able to keep you from stumbling? Now who do you think that is? I'm going to have you guys answer it. Who is it? Who can keep us from stumbling? The Lord, the Lord Jesus. <laughs> who can present us blameless before the Father? The Lord. The Lord. Jesus. 
How great is that? How, what, a, what a wonderful thing that is. So when we deal with those people that are, what's the word in the text they used? Well, that are uh, doubting. Maybe at points they lack their faith. Maybe they're not showing it. Isn't when we deal with them, you know, deal with them, show mercy with fear, but realize God is with you, will keep you from stumbling, Jesus is with you. I'm using God and Jesus in the same, <laughs> as the same. He will keep you from stumbling. And how great is that? What a wonderful thing is that? You know, we're gonna we're gonna celebrate Thanksgiving pretty soon. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a service. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a meal on Wednesday night. Come and join us to thank God for all He has done for us. Never forget that Jesus will come back, and he'll come back to save and to punish. Frightening thing, isn't it? You shouldn't be afraid. Because he has done everything for you. Remember what Jesus has done. Dying on the cross for your sin. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just. He will forgive your sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That isn't made up by the Lutheran church, by the way. (laughs) It's out of the Bible. Growing up, I always thought that was, you know, that was the Lutheran thing. (laughs) Because I grew up in the church. Then later in my 20s, oh, it's, it's, it's actually in the Bible. <laughs> what a wonderful thing our Lord and Savior does for us. So we just continue to remember him. Continue to remember him. I'm going to say, hopefully I didn't lose my last page. Jesus gave his life for you. He conquered death for you. He said his Holy Spirit that you might believe his promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation. He has promised to return in glory for you. Listen to his promise. But the helper, the Holy Spirit from the Father will send. He will send in his name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 14. Jesus remembers you so you can remember him. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen.